Hello, everybody. Welcome to It Was Tuesday, the podcast where I, James Chen, talk about whatever I want to about the fighting game community. And uh, today we have definitely gotten ourselves some nice goodies from uh, Capcom that hopefully I will not get a YouTube strike for <laughs> because uh, obviously the uh, thingamajig, uh, they released some footage at the recent SFL finals of some of the characters that we haven't seen uh, some good decent match footage for. A lot of people analyze those, put those on YouTube, they got strikes, but that was because that was a pay-per-view event, and now they've officially released those match video footage on Twitter, and so hopefully we should be able to analyze these, and uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> everything should be fine, because I really, really do want to analyze this footage and uh, take a look at these. And we're going to go through them very slowly and very in much in detail. And uh, I also really... Oh, it's on their YouTube page officially now. Okay. And I really want to... That makes it even easier because then I can do slow-mos and all that stuff like that. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, there's some game news out there. Uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus got its new rollback edition coming out. Sounds like it's going to be a brand new game. Uh, so it sounds like we're going to have to buy a full brand new game. It's not going to just be a patch or an upgrade to the existing one. We'll see. They haven't really officially announced things yet, but hopefully that is the case. And if that's so, then, uh, you know, doesn't matter. Who cares? We're getting rollback in Grand Blue. <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, you guys have probably noticed that I have indeed cut my hair here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm Samson or something. Maybe cutting my hair is what has caused me to lose all my energy. <laughs> but uh, obviously it is um, not a not not not. not it's, it's all right. I don't I, hopefully that once it grows out a little bit, it'll look a little better. Uh, but right now I'm not used to it and it looks odd to me. So, uh, we'll see what happens as time goes through, uh, as time goes on. So hopefully, uh, it will clean up and, uh, and look a little bit better as I let it grow out a little bit. But I definitely want to go over this footage here. Uh, and again, they released, uh, they uh, apparently released it officially to their... I was just going to go straight up on the, um, I was just going to go straight up on the, uh, Twitter footage, but yeah, so they actually have it officially on their channels right now on their YouTube channel, which is great because like I said, that will allow me to, uh, slow down and analyze and do all sorts of other stuff. So we'll go ahead and go straight to their YouTube footage and, uh, <coughs> <laughs> just shave it all off <laughs> oh man uh yes uh it was tuesday is the official name of the show now because uh the um it was the tuesday show and now it's not the tuesday show so the best way to put it was it was Tuesday, so I think it all just works out. And of course, for those of you in the know, people know what it was Tuesday is from. So yeah, exactly. So, and now it is the most important day of your lives. Exactly. So, all right. So yeah, in the game. Well, like I said, we still don't quite have proof yet whether or not uh, JP has like some sort of spirit of M Bison or something, because he's de there's definitely. Uh, cause for belief that a lot of his projectiles and stuff is actually like the spirit of M. Bison, and I think that's uh, kind of neat. So, <laughs> yeah, that's actually true, huh? I completely forgot about that cone, my, 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 uh, my bison box. I should open that up again, so. Uh, but let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and analyze some footage over here. I'll try not to make it too loud here, but let's switch camera views over here so that you guys can see this. And yeah, I think that I don't know, the hair looks better from the front, I think, than it does from the sides. Anyways, yes, uh, uh, happy new year to everybody. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to watch this through one time real quick without, uh, you know, much just me reacting to it. 
but then we'll go through and analyze this very, very deeply. And yeah, the footage that was getting copyright strikes was um, uh, the ones directly from the pay-per-view. So now that these are officially up on their YouTube, I don't think that they're going to do anything about it. So uh, for my birthday, uh, uh, Investigation Cone printed out for me a puzzle box. Uh, it's a little bit loose over here, but it is one of those puzzle boxes that you have to figure out how to get the cover off of essentially like this basically and so you had to like figure out how to move all the parts and there's like all these different parts here that like let you s slide things up and down like see like normally this doesn't go anywhere but you slide this and this slides down which now lets this slide a little bit this way which now allows me to slide this this part down so I can now shift the panel a little more and I can now go over here and like slide this up a little bit more like this and etc etc it's one of those puzzle boxes to see how you can get it open and it's actually kind of neat <laughs> how do you know I don't already have my bison bucks stored in there not a con I already do <laughs> that's actually not a bad idea hiding some stuff in here but Unfortunately, that means that some people will already know how to get stuff out of it, namely myself and then, of course, uh, uh, Cone, who made this for me. <laughs> so <laughs> that's definitely kind of risky. Uh oh, <sighs> now I'm just going to sit here and play with this all day. So, yeah, let me put this down and just leave it alone. So, yeah, but actually it would be a really good idea to hide something in there. Any case. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and watch this footage. This one is the first one. It's Marisa versus Manon. I know we've been calling her Marissa uh, a lot of the times, but the in-game says Marisa. And so I'm actually going to try to see if I can get used to pronouncing her name more as Marisa uh, than, than it is as Marissa. So let's watch this footage between Marisa and Manon. And uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that this is actually, uh, is this actually Matsumoto and Nakayama-san playing against each other, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, that's why they call it developer match, but I'm not 100% sure. But let's take a look and uh, watch this footage. <laughs> That's gonna be so interesting with that vacuum effect. Very grappler from DNF Duel like. That see, is that just normal? Is that just her sweep? Cause that sweep is ridiculous. Dude, like I already want to pause and rewind that because she's dead, okay? There should be no breathing animation on the ground because she, she's dead, okay? I'm sorry. Manon is no longer a, uh, a uh, model after that one. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the contrast between the, the, the fighting styles between them is so cool. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, Marisa, Marisa seems a little bit more like the bruiser kind of archetype, while Manon seems more like a traditional grappler archetype, but more of a, actually more of a Laura Mika kind of grappler. God, that's so good. Well, remember, Flashy Flash, a lot of the, uh, dead. A lot of, uh, Street Fighter purposely make the hands and the feet very big because it's much easier to track while you're watching a match. So it's very easy to see 
people attacking and such, and that's why they do it. That's why it's been that way. Um, but uh, that's basically the idea of it. So that's why Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 5, and Street Fighter 6, the characters have particularly large feet and hands is to make it so that it's uh, very, very easy to track the action a little bit here. Uh, I did get to play the betas, Holmes, and I've really enjoyed the game a lot. Uh, I don't know. Actually, they're probably called Drive something or other, but we'll just call them Supers for now. Now, first of all here, let's just, let's just go through these intros here. And uh, so one of the things I'm going to say about Marisa right away here uh, very early on is that, you know, I've talked about uh, what I've complained about a lot of uh, Injustices animations and I don't like the way, for example, Superman was done. While there's like there's no heft behind Superman, it doesn't look like he's punching as hard as Superman should be. Marisa is a perfect example of what I mean. A lot of like reeling and snap into the punch, a lot of screen shake, a lot of heft into everything. Like this is how Superman should have been animated. And so again, I know. I go into a lot more than just the gameplay footage. I'm really, really, really into the way that they animate things and the styles and stuff like that. So there's going to be a lot of that in this analysis as well. So, right, exactly. And that's the thing is the reactions from the opponents getting hit as well instead of just going... Like, it just doesn't seem really good. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The, the the Street Fighter V had good post animation flourish, but that's different from the follow through. But let's go ahead and watch this in slow motion here. So immediately, one of the first things that we're gonna look at right away here is that a lot of people have been asking about the stars that are under the meter over here. There might be some sort of really cool feature here that they blur out the players' names. In replay, there's probably an option to blur out players' names so that when we upload footage to Twitter, we don't have to draw the black bar ourselves. They might have actually accounted for this and just replaced the names with passwords <laughs> and uh, that lets us show the replays without showing who we're fighting against. That's my guess from this. The stars, I don't think, mean anything. I don't think they're a part of the gameplay footage or anything. I think that's just all they are, masking the usernames of the people that are actually playing. And I think that's really, really cool. But we will notice right away uh, that Manon does have a counter over here. I'm not sure what the symbol is supposed to be, but we already know that it's a throw counter, and we'll see that as the match progresses, that every time she gets command throws, it actually starts to uh, up the count, basically. Right, exactly. And that's true, too. I wonder if they'd even let you hide your name when you're playing online, Six Machine brings up a good point. It says, important for streamers since they get sniped if their names are out there. That's actually really an interesting point if they let you actually blur the name out even just in regular matches so that way it doesn't allow people to get uh, stream sniped. Yeah, oh yeah, you're right. It is so much. See, like the guy getting thrown on that symbol, like I literally thought was like their hair. <laughs> Oh, hang on. Let me see if I can do this over here. Uh, like, I thought it was just like a big, big person and it was their hair. So, uh, can I see this here? Let me see. Yeah, okay, here we go. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, I thought it was like a short chibi character and it was like their hair or something. I totally read that wrong. I'm going to totally zoom in this 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 symbol over here. <laughs> See, I thought these were the eye like I thought the the head was the eyes. 
<laughs> and it's like a little chibi character, like leaning down or something with the hair. But no, you're right. It's two people. It's a person. It's a person throwing. See, like I thought this was an eye or something like that. I thought that was an eye. But yeah, it is a person tossing another person over here. <laughs> I, I I I totally had that wrong. Like I literally thought this was the hair. I thought this was the hair, and these are their eyes, and like that was the fist on the other side or something like that. I thought it was a chibi character. Anyways, okay, okay. Uh, back to the match here. Uh, let's get going over here. So watching it at 50% sent speed. So already, already we get a punish counter here. But again, Manon with the suction. And uh, it looks like Manon goes for a regular throw. So, you know, obviously frame data wise, we don't know what any of the frame data is going to be on any of this stuff here. But I'm assuming she's going to be plus in this situation. So again... For Street Fighter V players, this is going to be something we're very, very much used to, having to deal with the plus situation. But that might be a specific mechanic for, uh, for uh, Manon, right? So she might be a character that has to make you think about it a lot. And with the way the game is built, there's probably a lot of decent ways to, to get away from that. So you're jumping every time. Yeah, that'll be, we'll see what happens there. But here's the thing on block, we don't know what the frame data is, right? So if she vacuums on block and you're minus, then it's a problem for her. But she might, Manon might actually be the most Street Fighter V esque character. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about the stage, uh, Daj Mahal, uh, in just a little bit. So, uh, but you see there the throw escape, neutral jump, and I mean, like, I love the fact that Manon's crouch is literally like the ready judo pose, right? Like, because that's her the basis. She's a mix between judo and ballerina. And so her crouching animation is literally her in the ready judo pose. I know some people might think that that's an awkward stance, but I think it's really cool. So <laughs> I think it's neat. So there we go. Good kick here. And I don't know if this is going to be a forward plus button or if this is just a plain old button. But Manon definitely tries the whiff punish with this. But we see this moving forward kick. And you can already see. So if these are the developers and they've been playing a lot, we'll have a better idea of what they want to do with stuff. So instead of just accepting the fact that your frames are minus and living with it, you see that what the Manon player does is actually go into a drive parry. So drive parry prevents the pushback, and now you have the plus frames next to the opponent, and so the mix-up is yours technically. Now, she doesn't do anything. Theoretically, if that punch from Marisa is minus, then you would get that. So in this game, the pushback is a lot farther than Street Fighter V. So you don't end up with a situation where characters are next to each other. So the frame data isn't as important, but you change that if you use the drive parries. If you use the drive parries successfully, you end up next to the opponent and the frame data matters a little more. So the drive parries will turn it a little more Street Fighter V-esque and you could take advantage uh, to... You could take advantage of the plus frames a little bit more. And yeah, yeah, exactly. So Big Four Lil says that this is Street Fighter V was medium buttons the game. And so this is definitely going to add an extra layer to that, which I really, really like. So I like the drive parries and I like the fact that they have a big risk associated with them because if you get tossed out of a drive parry, those throw da the throw damage is not a joke. The throw damage is not a joke if you get thrown out of a drive parry. <laughs> hurts so you got to be careful of that and so immediately here we see a drive reversal uh let's see here mm, bam so drive reversal and again just the animation is beautiful over there and here we go armor so we definitely have armor in the building here with an ex move so Marisa has this armor move that apparently seems like it could work pretty decently as an anti-air. And there you go. Pow, smack, and get some plus frame attacks here. But we get wake up buttons from Manon. Not worried at all. Whatever, wake up buttons. Okay. And links, but too far away to get multiple hits from there. Back to the neutral spacing. And then this sweep. This, is this a sweep? 
Like, I'm glad they make sweeps good in this game. I'm glad that they gave sweeps hella range in this game so that everybody can be birdie in Street Fighter, in Street Fighter 6. Because I hated the fact that sweeps were almost useless in Street Fighter 5. Like, they were too much reward, so that's why they didn't want to give it to you because you got the knockdown, but that's why they all got to be super punishable. But I like the fact that a lot of characters have proper range. But when I'm talking about proper range, this? <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. Dude, like, obviously the frame data isn't, like, super fast, but, like, the... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And some of this might even just be crouching animation. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this might be about a 16 or a 17, 65th, like maybe 13, 14, 15, 16, depending on how much of that startup was just crouching animation. But that reaches hella far. And yes, this will hit at round start for sure. But this is hella far. And she gets two hits off of that. That's going to be nasty. So in other words, I mean, this is great as a grappler. So one of the things that my favorite things about Grappler, like Zangief in Street Fighter 2, is he had one of the best sweeps in the game. Clearly he had one of the best sweeps in the game, and that's what made his footsies really dangerous and what allowed him to get for the throws. If they actually make Zangief sweep good again in this game, <laughs> and make him so that he's still like a traditional Grappler, dude, I am so in there. I am so in there. I'll be so happy. And then immediately drive rush in there, misses, whiffs the button here. Oh, and DI. All right, let's watch this DI here really quick here. Okay, here we go. So after the blocked button, immediately with the DI here. So let's take a look at this. DIs have always been red, uh, Holmes. They've always been... Or is this, or is the glowing red a little bit more than it was before? Have they, act, is this more red than it was in the beta? Maybe. Actually, now that you bring it up, Holmes, I might, I might just have a bad memory here, but did they make it glow red, like brighter red, more emphasis on the red to make it easier to react to outside of just the paint splotches? One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, this is a bad way to measure the frame data of it because there is some hit stop like that. So I can't measure the frame data here unless I know what the hit stop is. But I think it's the same. I'm pretty sure it's the same as it was before, unless someone can confirm. Uh, but I think it's the same right there. You know, it could be per character, that is true. Could be dependent on the character uh, as well as Soviet data says. But obviously, DI is still very powerful here. And you get this big old... Con and look at oh, God. This is what I mean, man. This is what I mean about the animation. So exactly what I said about what they shouldn't do, what they should have done with Superman. Look at the reeling startup of these punches from Marisa. Look how long she holds the fist in the back position. Like, you clearly see the arm back there. And then when this hits here, like that, that is exactly what I said that they should have did for Superman. Like, literally exactly what I said. Like, show the arm back and frozen in the back for as long as you can. And then when it punches, look at this. Look at the, look how fast it goes. One, two, three, and it's hitting. So it doesn't matter if you're animating the arm smoothly through or if it holds back and then punches, the frame data is going to be the same. You can make the frame data, this is all startup. Whether you do this or you do this, the startup is the same. And so if you want to give the impact for these moves, this is how you animate them. And this is what they did for Marisa. I mean, look how long she holds this arm back. 
Look at this. The arm is just chilling back there. This is animation. If you've read Richmond Lee, a.k.a. Art Eater's little uh, Darkstalker's Guide, he's talked about the, uh, the anticipation and the snap. That's what this is. That's what this is. Look at Marisa. Her arm is just back there. It's glowing. She's building this anticipation here. You're getting the tension built up in her arm, which just emphasizes the, the point of damage. Whereas if you examine Manon, she's the opposite. A lot of her moves are very flowing, but that's the way she's supposed to fight, right? Like, she's supposed to be flowing. So you change the anime animation style for what the character is supposed to do and so you sit here and look at this and like even has the little glow on here but like that's one frame right so whoops uh wrong button here there we go this is one frame right here so from here to here boosh one frame two frame Three frame, and look at all the blur. Look at all the blur. Four frames. So in four frames, she smacks you upside the head. And so when you actually see this in regular motion here, this is what it looks like. Like, dude, the force is there. And it's so good. It's so good. The snapping on all of the hits is so good. Even in slow motion, like you see this, it's just like, uh, pop, uh, pop. and then again, uh, pow. and then they even give us this alternate view where you get to see just how painful and look at the reaction of Manon's character, dude. Like, she didn't just get hit. Like, she is getting knocked down in a special animation knockdown, dude. Like, and it's a hard knockdown. <laughs> it's a hard knockdown. This is what I mean. This is, this is how you assign power to a character. This is exactly how you're supposed to do it. And this is what I meant. Su Superman should have had as exactly... You can find my old streams where I said Superman should have been... Pow, pow, pow. Like, that's exactly how he should have animated. And that's exactly that we see over here from Marisa. Snap, snap, snap. All anticipation. Everything anticipation into snap. And that's what makes that animation so beautifully beautiful and then of course we see the drive rush in there which is a common tactic to keep the aggression going so there you go and then this move right here you see look at this that move is probably minus i'm guessing this move is probably minus here but again the pushback look at the pushback distance on manon Look at the pushback distance on Manon here. And again, snap and then snap. Even her jumping animation, she freezes in the air. So this leg, look at the anticipation, snap. Jump up in the air, anticipation. Her arm is just back there the entire time, snap. But then pushes Manon out of range so that she probably can't get punished or is pretty safe. And again, this is where the drive parries come in. Had Manon woke up with the drive parries, I'm suspecting she would have parried the knee, parried the dive punch, and would have been in a plus situation. Jamie players were very well known for throwing out the heavy lunge punch from full screen away. It's minus six on block, but it pushes you so far away, you can't do anything. But if you anticipate it with the drive parry and you parry it, you end up right next to him, minus six, and all of a sudden you can punish him. Drive parry is going to become a very important mechanic that we have not explored very well in the beta at all. And that's really something that we've got to think about. So, but here we go. So punching and again, try to do something in between. Got hit, drive rush to come in here. Armor. So we've seen this move before in the previous one where she has this like this armor defense blocking kind of thing. And I'm not exactly sure what happens. It's like she goes into this armor and then it gets punched and it triggers or unless she just does it automatically. I wonder if that's the case here. Right. So delaying the, the timing uh, like Zangief heavy punch. 
you know, where he could delay it and pow or and make it go farther, there might be a need for that because if people do get used to seeing her reeling, you know, her her startup animation. But again, I, it, it the frame data is going to be the same no matter what. So, yeah, that dude is a mime. <laughs> that's definitely a mime here. But it hits. It's a punish counter. And it looks like that's a combo. It looks like that's a combo. And look at how much life Manon has. Look at how much life Manon has. Okay? Dead. <laughs> and again, it's just this animation, dude. Like, look at this. Look at the buildup. Look at the buildup here. Oh, God. Like, the, the anticipation that this builds up here before she pounds you in the head. Like, again, here, swinging back there, and now... Like, look how fast that fist, look at that, look at that. Dude, what did I tell you about the snap? What did I tell you about the snap? Look at this animation transition here. This is animation, <laughs> okay? <laughs> that is animation right there, bam. Like that snap right there, and then KO even before the life meter goes away. The life bar is still there. The game is like, nah, she dead, man. <laughs> she dead. I don't even have to drain the meter yet. I'm putting the K on the screen because she's dead. <laughs> Boom. Punch your face into the floor. And look at the big explosion and how it like freezes on the floor. And then she kicks you over. And yeah, there's no way that Manon should even be breathing at this point in time, okay? She's done. She is done. <laughs> oh my god. How do you even get up for a round two? Someone pointed out that it's so great that she does this win pose where she does the kisses fingertips. And uh, it happened to be at 69 seconds win. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but what a win pose here. I love this. Oh, Mariz is so cool. Mariz is so cool. And then she just flexes. And not even like flex flex, but just like, yeah, that's how it's done, baby. That's how it's done. And I love that, dude. I love it. So here we go with round two. Now, what I want to go back here and check something really quick because I missed it. Uh, let's see if I can find the situation. Let's see. So it happened very early on. Yeah, it happened really early on. Interesting. Oh, I see. So Manon's throw meter just starts at one. It just starts at one. Okay. So there's no zero. Manon's throw meter, throw counter starts at one. So she starts at a level one. Got it. So she didn't get any throws that entire time. And so now we're back to this again. There's that nice kick there. God, that's range. But yeah, there definitely seems like that there might be like some sort of holding factor. This is a perfect parry. She just happened to get the perfect parry. And here we go, the punish and on hit into command throw. But because it's a punish counter, is it a combo? But we the combo meter goes away, right? So one, two, so it says two hits into command throw. So I don't know if that's actually uh, a combo or not. I don't know if that's actually a combo or not. So um, it's interesting because it definitely doesn't say three when it hits, but the combo meter, the, the, count, the count goes up from one to two. So she got her command throw in here. So she pulls you in on punish counter. I don't know how plus it is. I don't know how you get away from this. Maybe it is a combo and they just don't add it to the combo meter. Not sure. Could be a 50-50. Could be a 33-33-33. We don't know. People are going to find lots of cool new ways to take advantage of these plus frames here. But she gets it. And if we look here, decent amount of damage, right? Decent amount of damage. Nothing huge over here, but the combo meter, ha the count meter goes up. We don't know what the different levels of the throw counter go up to, to be honest with you. But again, you know, the, all that snapping that I've been talking about with, uh, with uh, Marisa, like, 
literally Manon is like the opposite. She doesn't have a lot of snapping. See how like her animations are really fluid. So her DI, like look at her DI animation here. Like it's it's really fluid. There's none of that holding, you know, holding stuff. It's all the anticipation is built into the motion, into the spinning and stuff. So again, I love the way that they have they made the distinction between the two, and that's really really cool. And yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Alec uh, Manang Manango says that maybe combo into throw would be something she'd get at a higher level uh, throw levels or something like that. So. Uh, <laughs> sorry to hollow 33.33 slash 33. Anyways, so the DI gets the knockdown here. And yeah, you can see at high levels after knockdowns, drive rushing in is something that's going to become very common. We, I saw that a lot from players like nephew. When I played nephew in the beta, every time he knocked me down, he would go into the drive rush. Now, the interesting thing is he would go into the drive rush with Ryu and or Chun and go high or low, right? He would go for the mix up in that situation. A parry beats both of those and puts you in a minus situation. It is a danger situation because a drive rush will be plus but it is also risky because if they drive rush in and throw they punish it very very badly but again all the systems kind of balancing each other out and so that's actually really kind of neat and so yeah you can choose to use a drive rush to get in spend a little bit of that bar or choose to save it and just try to walk your way in there again like I said, there's going to be a lot of ability for player differentiality. Some people are going to be aggressive about spending their drive meter. Other people are going to be very conservative with it. And I'm really excited to see how that plays out, uh, to be honest with you. So, oh, it gets the five and it doesn't increase anymore. Okay. So dash is in there. Oh, there was a drive parry. You see? See how the, the players who have been playing this game for a while with drive parry. Now, if he had gotten thrown there, he would have taken a crap ton of damage. Uh, assuming that it is maybe uh, Matsumoto and uh, Anaki Yamasan or somebody else. But there you go. See, parrying the drive, drive impact means that she's plus and close up. And so there you go. She can actually uh, act first and crouch catches with the crouching light kick. But she's at a level two right now. Nice neutral jump. What a read. And there's that lift move. And then she cancels into a drive rush. So this is going to be expensive here. Boom. Three gone. And she goes for the full combo here into a command throw. So this command throw definitely combos and increases it to level three. But... I mean, already, look how much damage that uh, Marisa's taken already here. That's, I, mean, I guess that's all right damage. I guess that's all right damage from the throw. But it definitely increased her uh, 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 count over there. Wait, so uh, there's a drive parry. Yes, so a drive parry basically makes it so that if you block something, you don't get pushed back. The frame data remains the same. The frame data remains the same, but you don't get pushed back. So if you drive parry something, you stay in place, and then you basically just uh, kind of tank it a little bit. Now, if you can parry something one or two frames before it, a move hits you, you get the perfect parry, which is like a third strike parry. But again, that's like a two frame window people have calculated and keep in mind that a parry in third strike is like a 13 frame window or something like that. And so, uh, yeah, you have to be exact, 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 exact to get the perfect parry. It's, it's very, it's harder to do, but drive parry's biggest weakness is that if you throw it, you all automatically get a throw counter. And when throws land as a counter, they do so much damage, so much damage. No, this is footage that's officially on their YouTube now, Adventure Time. So I don't think we're going to get striked. I don't think we're going to get striked for this. So, And they've already put this officially on their Twitter as well. So jump, anti-air, EX into, is this a, a level two? Uh, yeah, a level two super. So you can't cancel into level ones, but level twos actually work here. And so we get this kill here. And Manon gets a perfect on this but again it's just the animations like 
what I love about them showing Marisa, ver, Marisa versus Manon all the time is the super distinction between the characters, play, the, the, the way that they're animated and their, their, you know, their presentation. Like this win pose is like the coolest thing. And I, I love that the person in the background, like stands up and applause when she starts doing this, but it looks so funny. Like she's like, Woo -hoo -hoo, woo -hoo. And the person on the back over there turns around and looks and goes, Oh my God! Wow, that's so beautiful! Oh, that's so beautiful! And they all stand up and clap. I don't know. The timing of it just makes me laugh, dude. Like, like, la la la, la la la, la la la. She turns around again. Oh my God! Oh, that's so beautiful! Yay! <laughs> this just makes me laugh, dude. It makes me laugh. Oh, man, but immediately drive rush in there. What is that? Wait a second. Is that EX throw invul? <laughs> she just goes right through that. Is that twirl have invul? <laughs> Holy crap. And then gets the hit. And oh, God, that throw animation. But that's decent damage right there. It's okay damage, but now four, up to four now. She's got four on the throw counter. So again, we don't know how much of this is just because it's EX or because it's a, um, but, or because she has the throw counter. Maybe if she gets up to three, she gains invul on the twirl or something like that. We're not sure how it is yet, so. Is that, the, is that what they officially call it, Adventure Time? The metal count? Oh, and yeah, you are, you tried to, okay, so she goes in again for another throw. And we see uh, Marisa here try to wake up with a drive impact, but get tossed again. And this is a different throw here. Now, I don't know what triggers the different throw animations, because this throw animation is sick, by the way. But it starts off with the... Uh, uh, the twirl here. So the twirl through, grab, a hit into this animation, which is just hilarious. I mean, seeing her like do this dance with Marisa is so great. <laughs> Boink! But again, it's so graceful. It's not about strength. It's about like the flow of it all here. Then she comes in. Okay, yeah, there's no twirl at the beginning. So this is a different one. And she grabs you and she flips you in the air and slam and look at the damage now. Look at the damage now. <laughs> grabs you, and I love this, trips you up in the air, plants you to the floor, and that is a good chunk of damage, dude. That right there, that's like over 25% damage maybe? Because that's a lot of damage right there. That might be more than 20%. I think that's like about 25% damage. Uh, now, yeah, you definitely lose mix-up afterwards, but that's probably the punishment, right? That's probably the punishment for landing the command throw, which is good. Uh-oh, DI. And then boom, punish counter. She goes in for the drive, the lift into the kick. She gets the follow-up into the lift, into the throw again. Wow, so this this one juggles too. So she's got some sort of a, this throw that grabs, it juggles. And now it has even more animation because it's at level five. But yeah, you're right. The counter doesn't go up. So five is the max that it gets right here. And then she slams you down here. And again, look at the damage about this. Look at the damage. Boom. Whoops, I can't. There you go. And look at this. Look at that, man. It's another, like, good 20, 25% of damage over here. And then she goes in for the drive rush, but, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work against the super this time. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. Drive rush in super, and then, look at this flex, dude. Oh! Now, what's interesting about this is that the super does create a completely different background. So that's a really interesting thing here that they do this, this, this trick of putting it in its own background. So having all the rocks and stuff makes sense. But I mean, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Like, you're just like, oh, 
Oh, you look up and dude, look at this. <laughs> look at that look on her face, dude. <laughs> She's like, like literally, Marisa is just like, <laughs> you know you're about to die, right? <laughs> you know you're about to die, right? And then the fist kiss, the kiss on the fist. And then the teeth gritting. <laughs> Look at this. Like before she punches. She's <laughs> dying by snoo snoo. <laughs> Jojo Bizarro. <laughs> Look at this. Oh. Dude. That. Ooh. Oh man. <laughs> that right there. You know. <laughs> You know something not good is happening over here. You know that there is going to be problems. And just that look, like, please, no, spare me. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Oh, and here it is again, that wind up, that anticipation. And look at the speed. Again, just on the release of this. It's so beautiful, dude. Oh, God. I love what they did with this animation. And look how much anticipation is built up in here, dude. Like, how many frames have I had to skip just to be able to get it before she actually punches? So it's like, uh, uh, okay, maybe that counts as moving forward. But one, two, three. In three frames, they switch the camera angle to the big duff here. Oh, it's an uppercut, too. She catch you with the freaking uppercut, dude. It's not even punch you straight in your face. It's an uppercut. And then, dude, like, just to give you the emphasis of power, to let you just skate across the ground, bam! Ooh, plap. Blap, pow, and you still crack against the wall. And then the flex afterwards, and she's still flexing, dude. And she just walks into the screen like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just got hit by Dez, and you have got hit by Dez or Troy, dude. You definitely got hit by one of them, dude. It's got Dez and Troy over here, and together they destroy. <laughs> here we go. Goes back in there, try to hit a button, get hit. And so I guess after the super, she actually gets a pressure here because you tried to hit buttons here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's a good question, Woozy. Let's find out. Let's see where she... Yeah, because they were in the corner. They were absolutely all the way in the corner when she activates the super. But as with a lot of supers in these Street Fighter games, after the super hits here, so she's in the corner, and after the super hits, clearly they reset everybody back to the mid-screen here. Because after this comes out here, or maybe she gets the corner. That actually looks like Marisa will get the corner no matter what. Because, yeah, this is a corner position right here because the screen isn't moving. So no matter what, after the super, Marisa actually gets the corner, it seems like. Oh, you blocked that and you're stunned. Here we go. So Marisa starts her comeback route over here. Duff. Oh, my God. <laughs> That EX causes a tumble into the wall, and then pow, you hit the wall, and she gets more combos. Ow. And then jump into command. God, it didn't even look like she was done with block stun, dude. It didn't even look like she was done with block stun, dude. Plop. That must be like jumping light or something like that. But here we go. Here we go. The command throw once again. Put your face down and ta. <laughs> what a comeback by the Marisa player, dude. But then the wind pose over here puts the helmet back on and then respects the warrior here, respects the rival, picks them up, carries them away. But dude, like this is the craziest thing. And, uh, and uh, what I'm going to do here Let's put it back to normal speed here. But what we're going to do here is let's actually just take a chance to listen to the background music because the background music is really nice too. Like, 
Like, just listen to the music. If you can. Here, to be honest with you, it's really kind of hard to hear, so... I think you're just gonna have to be able to try to listen to it on your own at some point in time. Uh, it's hard to hear at this point, so... Um, oh, they have that on the YouTube already? Uh, Marisa's, uh, Marisa's theme? Yeah, uh, Forrest, I've been ca calling her Marisa. Uh, I'll show you why. But let's take a look at this mine back here. I just want to watch this mine. The background is really pretty, too. I really do like the background. I think the background is really nice. It's very busy. It's colorful. It has a lot going on over there. And I just think it's really well done, so. But yeah, you've got the merry-go-round in the background over here. The Eiffel Tower here. And it's really, really cool. But if you listen to the ending here, God, she even shakes her head too. My own's like, no, don't do it. Yeah, the warm lighting is really nice. But listen, listen to the announcer here. That's why I've been calling her Marisa, because that's exactly how they pronounce it in the game, and. At this point in time, I don't believe Capcom's going to have a Barlog wins kind of situation. So I've been calling her Marisa because I think that's more accurate too than calling her Marissa, to be honest with you anyway. So, so there you go. That's, God, what beautiful, beautiful, beautiful footage over here. So I forgot to mark it down as that uh, animated, animating over there. So... Uh, it could be Japanese accent, but I, I don't think so. I, I don't think at this point in time, I don't think that's what we're going to get. So, uh, But they also have, of course, the DJ and the Dalsim match. Now, this match, I actually have not seen yet. This is like, I literally have not seen this match yet. So this is actually going to be uh, brand new. Oh, God. I always said... Um, uh, Shriken. I've always said like Shriken because that's how I said it when I was a little kid. And so I've been trying really hard to repronounce it as Shuriken. <laughs> but I've always, as a kid, I was like Shriken, like Ninja Gaiden, you know, and, and stuff like that. And uh, actually, I would say Ninja Gaiden, right? The Legend of Cage instead of the Legend of Kage. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah. But let's actually watch this straight through one time without the analyzing so I can actually, this is a true reaction video of me watching this Dalsam and DJ match. So let's see this. God, DJ's ripped, what the heck? Tried to go for a shimmy. Wait, how does he even think of doing that? Oh dang, lights comboing into EX Fireball? <laughs> Double Fireball, dude. Oh my god. Oh, he missed the juggle. That kick is wild, dude. Oh dang, if that had comboed, I would have been sad. There's that new DJ Sway move that they had highlighted before. Damn, that Crouching Strong looks good. That? That looks hella good. Oh yeah, there you go. The counter hit out of the air, causing the knockdown. Oh, you're dead. I'm gonna see... <laughs> We're gonna slow the hell out of that one. Holy crap. Yeah, Drive Parry is gonna work really well against Dalsum to prevent him from pushing you away because you're gonna be able to Drive Parry his moves, not lose a lot of positions, and Dalsum's not gonna be in the range to throw you. So Drive Parry is actually gonna be a way to kind of hurt Dalsum a little bit. God, that jumping heavy punch. 
There's that crouching strong, dude. Yeah, he definitely has a fake foot. Wait, what was that? Okay, we'll see the wind pose. We might, we'll see the wind pose. Dude, <laughs> there's so many things I want to point out already, and I want to pause already. Yo! <laughs> Yo! Did he just level one super crumple punish him? Holy crap! Dude, that dread kick looks crazy. Oh, throw loops. Oh no. Oh, he's not dead. Oh, we tried to shimmy him. He tried to shimmy him. Oh, you're in burnout. Yes, and then of course the stance changes when they're in burnout. I love it. And I like how when you're in burnout, you're like really helpless, but not like extremely helpless. You're gonna have to learn how to fight in burnout if you want to play this game. Preparing the air fireball. Oh, damn, that hit out of the air. <laughs> Let's go, DJ. Drive rush to get in. Overhead follow up. Free jump in, no anti air. There's that twirl again. There's that, his little swaying thing. Oh, that standing fear still hits low. Wonderful. Here we go. We get throw loops again. No, it goes for meaty fireballs. Oh my god. Ha! Uses it to switch sides. I love it. And now he has the corner. Jojo. <laughs> they definitely do the background teleportation thing for a lot of the supers, it looks like. That was very Street Fighter V. All right, DJ, can you make this comeback? You got it in you. Oh God, there's that fireball fake again. Oh God, here we go. Overhead, throw, oh God. Oh god, the low and the combos! <laughs> so cool. <laughs> wonder who they got to actually make up that signature, to actually write that signature. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah, dude, if DJ is good in this game, dude, I'll be so happy. Uh, tired of DJ being crappy in Street Fighter 4, dude. Oh, man. Yeah, I got him with the shimmy, but... Again, the intro is so cool. Like, hey! It's like I said, the personalities are really well defined in this game. So let's take a look at this here. TJ looks really interesting, but Dalsum, I mean, he's got a straight fireball back, right? So we already know that. And there's that standing fierce. And wow, it recovered in time. And see how when they play in this game that if they think they can recover, they're going to parry. We see that a lot from the players who are playing in this. If they think they're going to recover in time, rather than just block, they parry. So you see this here, right here. He throws out a heavy punch, and instead he parries here. And, uh, you know, the other advantage of parrying is that if you drive parry stuff, you gain drive meter back. So drive parry and then parrying something, you get drive meter back. So uh, that's actually going to be kind of valuable. Doesn't work on projectiles. So you can't sit back and projectile drive parry projectiles to get stuff back. But if you drive parry attacks in the middle of fight, you do gain drive gauge back. So it's a calculated way that if your opponent is trying to burn you out by making you block stuff, you can drive parry a lot of things and actually gain uh, your meter back instead is kind of what the idea is here so <laughs> yeah sorry jihad joe there's a lot of footage here to watch oh but here we go so this is the punish counter throw so this is important to note here okay punish counter i don't know oh, dj tried to do the sway thing and he got punish counter whenever you get a punish counter throw the camera angle does some goofy things 
some goofy things. I talked about this JoJo Bazaar, but the stars are probably hiding the name of the users so that if you put replays up or maybe if you stream, there's the mode where you can actually hide the, the names. And so that way we don't have to draw the black bars on all of our Twitter highlights just to hide the names of people. So I'm pretty sure that's what the uh, stars mean over there. Uh, as for the arrows, probably the mode, like the battle hub fight ground. I'm not sure exactly what those are for, but you see the, you see the animation change here on the punish counter throw, but look at the damage on this. Look at the damage on that throw. That was almost like, uh, early Marisa command grab throw damage. Look at the damage on that throw. Getting punish counter throws is a big deal. Not only that when you do that. Uh, the character also cannot back roll. They have to get up in place. So off of a punish counter throw, they get up in place, so they have to deal with the mix-up. It's like they're in the corner. Normally, you can roll backwards. It doesn't change the frame data if you do the back roll, but you get away and reset to neutral. But on a punish counter throw, you have to deal with the mix-up uh, in this kind of situation here. I don't think it's going to be for the handicap. I'm, I'm like 99% sure that's just masking the players' names because that's where the players' names were when we played in the beta, basically. So you got to deal with this mix-up. Drill, okay, minus on minus drill there. Punish that. So it was able to combo. And yeah, look at that. Lights into EX Fireball. And again, with the way the drive system works in this game, I like this because you just have access to your EXs a lot more. It just doesn't feel like that you know, you're bleeding for EX. Should I spend the E? The? It's like, it's so much more interesting management that you have access to the EX is a lot more often. So going into the EX fireball just puts him at four out of six. It's going to go up and he drive rushes in there. Oh, here's that drive parry on wake up again. And interestingly enough, like I said, you are minus if you get your drive rush parried like this, but the parrier hasn't really, or maybe he's just going for the shimmy afterwards or something. Yeah, he was going for a shimmy. He wanted to fake the throw and get the dulcim to actually try to whiff throw and to get the punish counter. And there's the slide. And again, at ranges, you can be safe, it looks like. So boom, and it looks like he'll probably be safe on that slide over there. Yeah, starting the round with meter. Dude, it's so funny. What my friend who I've talked about a lot, the guy who works on God of War, he's been saying that for like every game. He's like, man, Street Fighter 4 should just start with a full ultra gauge. Man, Street Fighter 5 should just start with a full uh, V gauge, with a full V trigger. He's been saying this for like every game. And now here it is. <laughs> they did it. <laughs> so he's probably like... Told you, told you they should have just started with the full thing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, dang. What the heck punch was that? Random neutral jump. Both of them pressing buttons in neutral. There we go. The double fireball. So DJ has a double fireball. Have we seen a single fireball yet? Have we seen a single fireball? I'm not sure. We'll take, we'll keep watching over here. Double Rebukin. <laughs> Ow. Whoa. What was that? What did he hit him with? I was looking at DJ. So he jumps. Oh, he did the air fireball. Dude, it's a knock. Oh, maybe only on counter hit it's a knockdown. But dude, I love, I love Dalsum. Look at the way Dalsum like comes down to the landing. Woo! -hoo! That's so hilarious. He's like, ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure if he uses the fake to build it, but we haven't seen a fake at all, so I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think that's the case. Throws the air fireball again. There's the EX. So the EX, was that two as well? Or does the first one not go anywhere here? Yeah, so the EX one, the first one is just like a double repukin startup. And then the second one actually throws out the afterwards. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. But DJ does fake everything. But he throws out an EX and you can see that it just blows right through Dalsum's regular fireball. Yeah. Look at that. It just blows right through that. And then again, drive parry at so it doesn't get pushed away. But here we go. Counter hit and then DJ misses the follow up here. It is nice to see DJ. And it's nice to see DJ on the screen again. And DJ done nicely. Now, again, I'm not going to be uh, a judge on this one. But, you know, 
I feel like that this is a good representation of DJ instead of being kind of caricaturish and stuff while maintaining a lot of that classic DJ spirit. Forced down, if you ever see forced down, that means that's the quote hard knockdown, which means you cannot back roll. You cannot back, well, actually that is a back roll right there. Forced down maybe means that this shouldn't have been a knockdown, but it becomes a knockdown. Maybe that's what forced down means. Moves that aren't supposed to knock down actually count as a knockdown uh, at now. So you're right. You're right, Renato. There is, I mean, sorry, Woozy. There definitely is a hard knockdown, but I think that's what it means. Forced knockdown means this normal was supposed to be an air reset, but because it was a counter hit, it becomes a forced knockdown. And then back roll and then an air teleport. And you see the parry reaction again. Oof, and then there is this crazy anti-air kick. Dalsam has never had something like this before, dude. But it, 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 and it doesn't say force knockdown even on the counter. So this might actually be a knockdown no matter what. That might actually be a knockdown every single time. And if that's the case, that's actually scary. It's actually scary. Oh, oh, so he has the down back fierce again. Is a down back fierce. <laughs> Jumps in the air. So he's still very five like in that he's going to be a lot of floating here. Yep, double fireball again. And God, like I said, if that comboed, I would have been kind of sad. So he has the single dread kick here. So he goes, Duh, jab, delay jab, cancel into light dread kick. Gets the hit and the knockdown. And there's that beautiful roundhouse kick. I mean, the animation on this roundhouse kick. The, 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 again, I made the mistake saying that I feel like DJ's always been Capora because I always just assumed, I just, uh, um, I just conflated kickboxing and Capoeira, but it definitely seems like DJ is a lot more Capoeira than he has been in the past. So before it was just kickboxing, now it seems like it definitely is a lot more uh, Capoeira style here. So that's just beautiful animation right there. And then there's the sway move into the low. So the sway move into the low again. We're going to see this move a lot, but this sway move is going to be crazy. But again, the giveaway is the, is the after images, right? That's what we have to pay attention to when we see the after images. We know that's what he's doing. So that looked like it was punishable. That definitely looked like it was punishable here because the pushback on this wasn't that far. And looks like he got the hit. No, it doesn't say punish counter. No punish counter there. So might not have been punish counter, actually. That might have just been something happening here. There's the drive impact. Yeah, and again, not red for, for Dalsum. Well, he glows a little red, actually. Yeah, so there's that little red glow there. Was that there the whole time? Was that there the whole time? The red glow on the characters? Maybe they added that to try to be an, an extra visual giveaway that something is happening. So I don't know. I don't know. Okay, there's that standing. There's that crouching strong, dude. That crouching strong looks hella good. Oh, oh. Okay, doesn't stop the jump. And there's that force knockdown again. And this time he does get the combo into the up kicks. Now, the question here, uh, what's up, Donka? <laughs> Uh, uh, dude, best of five was in here and now Donka's in here. So if that is the same Donka, I'm not sure. It could be a different Donka because uh, it's spelled a little bit differently, I think. But here we go. Like the thing about it is, is one jump enough to charge for up kicks or is DJ a charge character now? That's the thing is I didn't actually pay attention to. Have we been paying attention to seeing if DJ has been able to walk forward and throw fireballs at this point in time? I think the dread kick was a charge because you saw the DJ a delay in between his low jabs almost like to get the charge in the previous sequence over there. I mean, there could be another Donka. I got confused by a bunch of ruins, uh, Donka. So <laughs> uh, 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 machine gun upper into another machine gun upper. Not sure how this move is going to work here. And there was the fake fireball. There was the fake fireball into dash forward. Is that the EX fake? He just automatically dashes forward. 
Does he just have an EX fake in the dash? <laughs> Do you see Dawson's face? Oh, that was great. Oh, okay. So it's so bad is apparently quarter circle forward machine gun upper is quarter circle back. Interesting. But yeah, like you see this whoosh, dash and then grab and then God, that face on Dalsim. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. We gotta, we gotta do this again, dude. We gotta do this again. Dude, this face on Dalsim. This face on Dalsim is so great. Damn it! <laughs> God damn it! Oh man, <laughs> it's too funny looking. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Oh, all right. Okay, let's go back over here. And then there's that throw, the kick throw where he steps on you. And yeah, he had a fake dread kick. <gasps> I don't think I've ever seen that before. He has a fake dread kick as well. Dude, he's all about fakes now. They turned DJ into the fake character, dude. That is terrifying. Holy cat crap. Dread kick is the is the is the is the carnival hook kick. I don't know if you want to call. We used to call it the dread kick. That's what it was called in Super Turbo. The dread kick. I don't know if it was supposed to be like named after dreads or something like that, but it was called the dread kick is what it was called. So the Sobat, the rolling Sobat, if we want to call it. But yeah, he's going to be all about this misdirection. So that's actually kind of neat. <laughs> Teleport in the air, that jumping fierce, which looks really good. And then blocks that. And there's the double fireballs. You can see again, the fake. There's the fireball fake again. Oh, get smacked. Fake fireball. Fake fireball. But see, the thing is, we haven't seen him walk forward into fireball yet. So it seems like his fireball is a sonic boom, perhaps. So while the dread kick and while the up kicks and the machine gun punch might be instant, it might actually be uh, that the fireball is still a charge move over here. Dude, I'm going to get so bodied reacting to fakes. Dude, DJ is going to destroy me. Oh, there's the drive rush cancel from Crouching Strong. Oh, God. Dalsum full dash up. Okay. Oh, man. Is it true that they all have the same health values? I'm not sure, actually. That's a good question. I have not sure, but Jaded Alex says yes. So we'll see. We'll see. There's that parry, and he got punished out of that. How did he get punished out of that? Oh, because he's crouching. That's why he didn't stand up. So he just got hit. So there's the EX and then just get punched. And then dude, Dalsum. Look at that. Look at Dalsum in his wind pose, dude. Dalsum is shooting fireworks, dude. Yoga. Oh, then he still breathes one last bit of fire. Dude, look at this. Hmm. Dude, his cheeks even puff up a little bit. He was just like, <laughs> at the end. Oh my God. And then this is like, I love this about DJ when he comes in. It's probably the shades that are doing it, but I swear at the start of this round, it doesn't look like DJ's looking at Dalsim at all. It looks like DJ's just like, like listening to the music in his head right now. It looks like he's listening to the music in his head. Look at him. He's like, yeah, <laughs> he's like seriously looking at like the music, listening to the music in his head. Cause then you see how his head goes down when the fight starts. Like he's actually just chilling to the music in his head, dude. Look at him. Yeah. All right, let's fight. <laughs> dude, it's so cool. <laughs> DJ and Alpha 3 was kind of crazy, but he wasn't great. He was a bad character, but he had the no recovery fireball, which was insane. <laughs> Alpha 3 DJ on home platforms. 
All right, so back to this again. Yeah, he was a bad character, but he was kind of... That no-delay fireball was so crazy. The problem was they just made it so that the no-delay fireball was literally... Um, was literally... Uh, like, it did like 10 damage. Or, it did like no damage. And here we go. This is the whiff punish right here. This crazy... Oh, you kicked? And I'm going to super and pow. So that's a level one super that he did there, if I'm not mistaken. So two into one. And on counter hit, he gets a crumple. So he gets a combo off of this super. Maybe only on count on punish counter. I don't know. But he obviously gets the juggle here with the dash up. But this is a target combo. He has a target combo here. Uh, uh. Uh, like clearly a target combo that he gets that juggle in that situation. So that's actually kind of a neat follow up. But again, it's always two fireballs. It seems like I haven't seen any one fireball. And then the EX dread kick, just the range on that. Look at this. Pow, pow. Okay. Doesn't seem to get a free juggle off of that. And there's the empty jump into the throw. Uh. There's a back-to-back -back throws over here. And so here we go. Oh, God. <laughs> I see the DIs and I just get mad, dude. <laughs> God, I hate DIs. Oh, my God. I hate these things. So what was that? That almost looked like the EX machine gun upper. And then immediately chained into the sway. Or is the Sway just have a punch? Is the EX Sway just have a punch at the beginning of it? And then he goes for that kick, which hits and launches again. And then he goes for the EX up kicks here. And again, that's enough time to charge. I'm still not sure if the up kicks are charged or not. And then he tries the shimmy there, backs off a little bit. Chills a little bit, and then here we go. So, like, if you look at DJ normally, like, look at his stance, right? Like, he has just this normal stance. Like, I'm ready to fight. He goes into burnout, and when he goes into burnout, his stance shifts all of a sudden into massive defensive stance. Like, he's like, oh, got to guard myself, got to block myself. So I love the fact that they even have different stances, like more worried stances when they're in burnout. It's actually kind of neat. Oh, you landed on the fireball. That looked, that was way too much uh, PTSD right there. Jumping straight up and landing on a dulcum fireball. There's that slide from good range. He does his ST walk. You're right. You're right. <laughs> oh, why didn't you jump attack? Double fireball. Never seen a single fireball yet. So while that's really good, that means if you jump over the double fireball, then he's really in trouble then, honestly. And here we go, Dalsum with the back throw. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, Dalsum's fireball looks like he recovers hella fast. But he's got his energy back here, so now... God, just going for all these DIs. He's just trying to clip, go through one hit and clip it. Drive parry to not get pushed back. Have the fireball. A drive parry there from Dalsum. And then that was a smart DI here. But how are they going to prevent DIs from being really good as anti-airs, I wonder? I wonder where, how they're going to do that. Oh, what's up, Desnier? Um, uh, what's the visual cue that you've seen, Desnier? I'll see it on the next one, but yeah. I just, I, I'm glad that they did a good, <laughs> the, the spark on the thumb is so good. Oh, so the sparks are always the fake? Interesting, because I saw the spark on the dread kick, but I thought that he had that all the time. Interesting, all right, so let's see. Let's take a look at him right here. So if we watch him in slow motion here and he throws a fireball, yeah, the fireball definitely looks like a charge move, in my opinion. So there, yeah, so no sparks there. 
Let's see if he has any. Oh, just drive rush in there. There's that sway into the overhead. So that's the first time we've seen the sway into the overhead. And how many frames is that, I wonder? So just want to see how fast this overhead is. So, so we'll count it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Yeah, so about 25 to 30 frames maybe. Maybe 25 to 30 frames. So hang on a second. Did we see a Dalsam Fireball anywhere? The next one he does, I'll count it. Pow, overhead gets the hard knockdown. So you get the free meaty setup here. No anti-air against Dalsam. Oh, there's the fake. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Oh, God, that spark is barely there. That spark is barely there. Yeah, that thing right there. Like, even at 50% speed, I barely saw it. But what's interesting is that he leaves it behind. He leaves it behind, so I wonder if that's kind of the thing that you got to look out for. So, <laughs> oh god, that's that's fast, but it's there. It's definitely there. We'll go back again and watch it again and and look for the spark on the uh, on the uh, on the fireballs too. So there we go. We get the sweep. There's the throw again. I love the way DJ looks so far, dude. I think he's super cool. Looking. Dang, two hits just go right through them both and teleport to the other side and probably doesn't have a chance to do anything after that. But using it to switch sides, I mean, that's going to be a common Dalsum tactic. And then bitch slap. All right, the shimmy got him. Ugh, oh, God, into the JoJo super. <laughs> what game am I thinking of where there was somebody with a bald head who drilled into you and went ding when it hit? Was that this game or was that a different game that I was thinking of? Maybe it is th this game. But yeah, dude, that super was brutal here. Was it SF4? Did he have that? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I think he did. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay, see, that fireball was pretty fast here. Oh, that was a cancel, too. <laughs> That's right. It was Ultra 2 that had the ding. <laughs> That's right. Oops. So this will be obvious when it starts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 40. I mean, that's 2, 40. I don't know how much of this is now follow-up animation. So it might be shorter than that. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. So, um... Yeah, no, I mean, I've been saying stuff about the online stuff as well. Dodge Mahal about ranked and stuff like that. So uh, I think we've definitely seen the up one without the EX. I, I can't remember now. But yeah, now look at that block right there. Drive rush in. There's the back throw. Oh, just the startup. I see. I see. Okay. Sorry about that. 
Okay, there it was right there. There was the fake fireball. So here's the regular fireball. The spark is in the fr is with the fireball. Do you see it? The spark actually travels with the fireball. So there is a spark on the real one, but it's right there on the fireball. So both of them have that. Then on the fake, you see the spark right away. So one, two, and then there's the spark on the fake. So you're just going to have to get used to seeing this spark. Bing, like that. Yeah, being able to uh, counter pick in ranked, I think, is something that they should definitely let happen. So there is a tell on that, but even at half speed, like, is it easy to see? Yeah, if you if you get good at looking for it, if you get good at looking for it, you'll be able to spot the fireball fake. Uh, you can actually spot that. So I don't think he has perfect booms. Well, the the spark doesn't even show up at the start of the fireball, the 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 real fireball. You don't even see a spark at all. See. There's no spark at all, so it's not even if it follows. It's if you see a spark, that's the fake. That's the fake. Oh, God, here we go. The DJ comeback. Here we go. So sway into overhead, smack. He walks up, gets another throw, and then he says, you know what? sway into low and it's a punish counter because we see Dalsum with the throw Woo! with the throw punish counter which means he can link into the crouch strong KO boom and DJ spotlight wait did he just grab the pen out of his head Oh, someone hands him a pen. I see. Got it. God, even the way that the marker, like, slowly gets onto the, like, the way that it kind of, like, inks into it. Now, it looks like that the animation is a little ahead of the marker, but I don't think that matters because at normal speed you can't tell at all. But that's a really neat effect on the marker. But whoever designed this signature for him did a good job because it's a sick looking signature. J. But see, that's the that's the thing. It's like that looks like the J that he puts at the end there. So what's the first part? That doesn't look like D-E-E. -E. <laughs> like what? Oh, oh, I think he actually types in D. He writes in D-A and then adds the J in there. So he actually writes like D, D, and then J, and then A. So like that's, this is supposed to be the E's right here. These are the E's right here. And he writes the A and the Y. And then he adds the J in afterwards. That's actually kind of neat. <laughs> See, he writes D, A, D, A, and then he writes in the J afterwards. So D, A. And then there's the J. That's cool. <laughs> That's neat. Even the way he signs his name is awesome, dude. Oh, man. So hang on. Let me watch this in regular speed again because I just want to see if we're going in normal speed and I'm actually looking for the fakes. Can I actually spot the fakes? Damage. That Ford Fierce looks good. Yeah, I like the way that people can use their sweeps now to actually try to get in. It's nice. Okay, yeah, there was the fake. Yeah, if you're looking for it, but man, you've got to be sharp to be looking for that. 
You've got to be sharp to see those sparks, man. Nice. Yeah, the background is nice too. The sunset. Yeah, there's a lot of warm colors on these uh, that we've seen here. So, okay, okay. So do we see a spark on that? Good God, that's so fast. No, there, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, is the is there an EX machine gun upper fake? Like that into dash cancel? Or is that a fireball fake? Or is that, what is that? Like, there's no spark at all. So maybe, yeah, EX machine gun upper is just an upper into a dash punch or something like that. Oh, you know what it is? EX Machine Gun Upper must automatically put you in the sway position. Just automatically transitions you into the sway. I think that's just what it is. I think it just automatically does that. Because that's what we see in the combo later on. I did not see that fake at all. I did not see that fake at all. Oh, I am not. There we go. That's what's wrong. Okay. I did not see that fake at all. Whoa, why is it slowing down? I don't have it playing at a slowdown speed. What the heck? Are you buffering? Here we go. Oh, God, yeah. See, I didn't see any spark at all on that. No, the fake doesn't charge up any of his stuff because we've seen too much evidence of him being able to do multiple hits even without the fake. God, DJ's going to be a nightmare to fight, dude. Holy crap, he's going to be a nightmare to fight. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Dalsam definitely spent a lot of time in the corner, I'll tell you that much. Oh, good get in move. See, now, see, it's weird. Like, there's that EX machine gun upper, it looks like again. So, what is this? Punch? EX machine gun upper? But the thing is, he goes backwards instead of forward this time. So maybe after machine gun upper, you can transition into the back or the forward. You can go back or forward. So you can immediately go into the forward sway follow-up or go backwards. I'm not sure. Like, that's just interesting. We're going to have to see how that works. Yeah, it is the EX machine gun upper, but we've now seen him transition into we've seen him transition into the for, the the forward sway and the back sway. So here we go. We see this here and then he gets the DI here. Pow, punch pow into the back sway. And that doesn't look like a link. That looks like a cancel. Mm, like see that looks like a cancel. There's that fake again. Could we see the spark on the burned out fake? Yeah, it was there, but barely. I could barely see it, dude. God, if they make neutral, if they make light fireball for Dalsum hard to neutral jump over again, that would actually be funny. It would feel so much like old Street Fighter 2 games again. I love that Dalsum's starting this comeback here, but then... He became obsessed with the DIs. He was just like, I got a DI through one attack, and then I can kill you. Oh, yeah, I want to see that here. Oh, no, but that's the projectile. If you parry the projectile, you don't gain any, you don't gain anything back. It's basically a neutral, neutral gain right there. But there we go. He became obsessed with the DI and got him in that situation. Yeah, DJ's gonna be tricky, dude. He's gonna be a interesting character to fight against here. Oh, man. 
Did we see the fake swaying? Oh, there was that dread kick again. God, it's so fast. And like I said, I barely even see that spark, dude. God, that's so fast. Yeah, the spark is there and it's a tell, but man, is it barely easy to tell. Oh, God. Tick throw. You'll go slap. Oh, and here we go. The super, the JoJo super. God, can this super just work as an anti-air? Look at that. Look at the way he punches. That super might actually just be a raw anti-air too. Like if he has good invul frames on that, he's just going to be able to smack you out of the air and just got and just go into it. Look, you're going to make me try to differentiate between JoJo and One Piece and, and their thematics and all the details. I am not an anime guy. I'm sorry I cannot help you in this situation. Okay, I actually saw the spark that time. I actually, like, subconsciously saw the spark. I think once you play them a lot more, we're going to be able to see it a lot better. Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, because mental stack wise, you're trying to deal with the sparks and then you have to worry about DIs and stuff like that. Oh, man. Uh, shoot. <laughs> with anime, yeah, I, I would say that, Renato. I think that's an apt comparison. I think that's an apt comparison. So, I mean, isn't that what they all called uh, what's his face's. Uh, Hecatonkery's punch at first, too, was uh, everyone kept calling it the JoJo punch, right? Everyone kept calling that the JoJo's punch as well. So there you go. That's uh, that's those those two matches. So there's one more. They have one more match, which is the Blanca versus the JP one, which I'm guessing will come out tomorrow. So I'm not actually going to be able to analyze that one right now. But maybe uh, in a little bit, maybe... Uh, Maybe I'll do an impromptu Tuesday stream and just just do it and just analyze it because I want to. Yeah, with the full screen OTG slide after the, the counter hit Blanca ball. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So we definitely there's that definitely there, but I can't analyze that because that's not officially out on their pages yet. And I don't want to get a strike by analyzing the other footage. So, uh, I mean, dude, and Blanca's Blanca ball looks like it bounces hella far. But again, if you predict it with the parry, maybe you can punish it. And so that's kind of the idea. So the parry is kind of like Street Fighter 6's version of instant blocking. So if you guys remember it, you know, a lot of fighting games these days do the concept of, hey, on block, it's less than it is on hit. In Exert, you had to do the instant blocking. In XX and in Exert, you had to do instant blocking to make that distinction, right? If you blocked it, it's the same frame data as it is on hit. Unless you instant block it, then you shave off a couple of frames. And so a lot of moves were designed so that, you know, they were completely safe or it was even their turn on block. Unless you instant blocked it, then it was the other person's turn, et cetera, et cetera. And so you had to manually kind of do that. And I feel like it's similar in this game. They increase the pushback. So the pushback is kind of far. So it's hard to punish things. So you have to manually figure out how to take advantage of the minus frames by actually pairing stuff and then being able to punish afterwards. So, uh, yeah, I think Honda's the only one that doesn't have decent match footage uh, left at this point in time. So... Uh, I don't know. Hopefully during Capcom Cup, we'll get Cami and Zangief. Please, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. But um, so that's that footage right there. Um, uh, unless anybody's got any questions. I mean, that's pretty much all I had planned for today. Um, so uh, I might actually just go ahead and end the stream a little bit earlier than normal uh, today. I, I thought I actually, because every time I try to think to myself, oh man, I'm, I'm just going to analyze this footage and uh, it'll be quick. And then it always takes like nine hours. So, you know, uh, it was a little bit almost kind of faster than I was expecting to. So uh, 
the uh, oh yeah, I mean the animated series, the Street Fighter Two animated series, Forrest based everything off of the American movie, I think. And so in the American movie, Zangief was a Shadowloo agent. So and Balrog was actually a good guy. He was the cameraman for Chun Li's news, fake news team. So he was actually I don't know what they were doing. Whatever, doesn't matter. Um, zoning in a game like Street Fighter 6, the mech has. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. Like, I feel like, um, zoning is going to be weakened a little bit because of the drive parry, right? So, like, one of the annoying things about Dalsim in 5 was that, you know, you makes you block and pushes you away and you can't get in and stuff. But if you walk up and parry things, you'll be able to not move back as far. If you drive parry a fireball, it doesn't push you away as much and stuff. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of little tools to help you get in there, but uh, zoning does seem like it has a lot of potential in this game because... Dalsim is going to have, I mean, Dalsim looks like he's going to be similar kind of rushdown style that he had in five as well. And being able to drive cancel like a crouching strong or a standing medium kick or whatever into stuff seems like it's going to be very useful for him. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how it works. We'll see how it works. So, uh, no, uh, drive parry is the two medium buttons. So it's medium punch and medium kick. So just hit that and you go into the drive parry. And if you hold the buttons and dash afterwards, that's how you do a drive rush. Uh, that's how you do a raw drive rush. In fact, a lot of times you could do a raw drive rush by hitting forward and then forward plus the medium buttons at the same time. They've added a little leeway into it. But basically from the drive parry, you can cancel into a drive rush. If you do it raw like that, it's just, uh, it's just cost the one, uh, I think it's what one bar total for that whole entire thing. But if you in order to cancel a normal into a drive rush, it's just forward, forward. You don't have to hit the medium buttons at all. You just hit a button, forward, forward, drive rush, cancel, and that costs three bars, basically. So, uh, yeah, and like I said, my favorite thing about this so far is that the way the game seems set up, there's going to be a lot of ability for people to do a lot of different things. Like, a lot of people were saying my Kimberly looked really strong in the beta, and thank you for that. I appreciate the compliment and everything like that. But every time I watched other Kimberleys, they played Kimberly completely different than I did. And that's actually really exciting. I, I feel like the characters are getting to a point where even without all the drive mechanics and stuff, there's just enough for the characters to do to actually present a lot of different options uh, for the players so uh, I, I'm really excited uh, by that and, and excited to see all the players do different things Graham Wolf Guile didn't look like Knuckle Do Guile let's just put it that way right it was very different kind of uh, styles etc etc so uh, I'm really excited for this game uh, I'm really hyped for this game genuinely very very excited for this game the beta has been so much fun I've had so much fun with the beta I can't wait until we get another beta, please, another beta, please, an open beta. <laughs> uh, I mean, when I watch uh, Gamer Bees Lucia, uh, I know that a lot of the success from Gamer Bees Lucia is Gamer Bee, right? Obviously, no character is bad in the game, but when you look at a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, um, what do you call it, uh, tier lists from a lot of people, Lucia is always pretty low. But again, no character is truly bad in Street Fighter V, but Lucia is still definitely uh, on the lower end of the character list. Like, Brian F. even had her down at, like, fourth worst character in the game or something like that. So uh, it just depends on who you talk to, really, and how much experience they have going up against Lucia. But... Uh, it's funny because I think Gamer B just wants to play Lucy because he likes, he like me, likes playing like kind of lesser popular characters. So I think he just wants to play that character because he has a pocket Luke. And if he has a pocket Luke, that should just be his main character, dude. It should just be his main character. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, oh, dude, the bonus stages, dude. There's so many bonus stages in this thing. There was like that one thing where you're like trying, like it's Street Fighter 1 bonus stages where you're hitting the boards. I've seen uh, the parry trial thing. There's the eating the food by doing the motions and who knows what the heck there's going to be in there. There's just su such a, there's a lot, 
a lot of stuff in this game. There seems to be so much one player content, Dodge Mahal, and that's actually think that that's what I'm actually most excited about right now is is literally the uh, the one player content in this game. It seems like they're really trying to right a lot of the wrongs that they made from Street Fighter V. Street Fighter V having basically nothing. So, uh, oh, Kimberly is like Lucia on crack, Atomic Punk. Like, when I play Kimberly in Street Fighter VI, I have a blast with her. And yeah, she's like a, she's like a stronger Lucia. She's super fun. Kimberly is so cool. I am having so much fun playing that character. Uh, however, I, that, like I said, one of my resolutions is I'm going to play multiple characters in this game. So it's not just going to be Kimberly. So I'm hoping to main Kimberly, Cammy, and Zangief, provided Cammy and Zangief are fun. Provided that they're fun. So uh, I definitely uh, am down to, to try to main those three. So wasn't Street Fighter V supposed to be more realistic based, but the engine couldn't support it. So they rebuilt the engine, kind of rushed things. Uh, I think there was some rumors about that. I know that the, the realistic one, there's one picture of a realistic Ryu fighting a realistic bison. But I'll tell you right now, that didn't look very good either. So that might have been another reason why they went away from that is just because it just probably didn't look very good. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, dude, Geef is, um, Geef, I've, he was one of my main characters for a long time. I've been a Zangief player almost my whole entire life. Uh, I just didn't play him in, uh, 4 because Cammy was there, honestly. That was the main reason. I only played one character. And then Street Fighter Five, I didn't play Zangief because I just didn't like the way he played in Street Fighter Five. I hate Vortex Zangief. I, I much rather have get in Zangief for the big reward and get in again Zangief. That's kind of what I, that's the Zangief that I like to play, uh, to be honest with you. So, but uh, there's a lot of uh, cool stuff going on uh, in this game. I'm excited for it. DJ Dalsum, I mean Dalsum, I feel like we didn't get to see a lot, a lot from Dalsum. I know I was definitely paying attention to DJ a lot more than I was paying attention to Dalsum in that because, I mean, I really didn't know much about DJ at all. Uh, but uh, Dalsum, I also feel like we didn't get like a full true, true display of what he was able to do. So uh, I'm sure we'll see more uh, in the future. And like I said, uh, get ready for the JP and... Um, Blanca footage perhaps coming out tomorrow if they do that maybe I'll do an impromptu Tuesday show or something like that just to analyze that uh, we'll see what happens so maybe we'll get uh, more than one it was Tuesdays this week so <laughs> keep an eye out for that so uh, in X-Men versus Street Fighter I mean I wanted to use Geef in X-Men versus Street Fighter but the problem is I love those games for the combos so I actually didn't play Geef because Geef didn't have a lot of combos. I wanted to play characters with cool combos. So Cammy was definitely there, but uh, Geef was not. So, um, I mean, again, you know how I feel about Green Hand. Everybody in the chat, a lot of you guys know how I feel about Green Hand. I mean, he doesn't really need it. I'd rather have him without it, especially if the EX one is just a horizontal DP again, because that's super boring. But uh, we'll see what happens. If they can find a way to give him back Green Hand and actually have it be useful and good, maybe. <laughs> but honestly, like uh, outside of uh, EX Green Hand and Street Fighter 4, Green Hand has never been that good. In Street Fighter 4 and Ultra Street Fighter 4, when they buffed it so it could be a whiff punish, like I just thought that was stupid. <laughs> I was just like, Zang, you, like, just give him a good sweep again, dude. Just give him a good sweep again. So, Because that's all I did in Super Turbo. If I wanted to whiff punish, I just swept you because his sweep was so damn good, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, the knee was cool in Street Fighter V, but Zangief just got nerfed in every way, shape, or form possible in Street Fighter V. So like I said, what I said earlier about that every character can fight in Street Fighter V does not apply to Zangief. Zangief doesn't exist in that game. <laughs> Zangief just doesn't exist in the game. So uh, he, 
so sad. The Zangief is just not in the game. That's how I feel about Zangief. So, yeah, I always like to do whiff knee in the grab. So, yeah, giving it more range was kind of weird. Kind of a weird choice. They should have given a fake knee. Yeah. <laughs> no, that would have been cheap. <laughs> giving Zangief a fucking fake knee. <laughs> That would have been so broken. Oh, my God. Yeah, that would be so broken. Holy crap. Like, can you imagine if he could charge his Fierce Punch and start punching and then fake it and then he could SPD you? No, that'd be too much, dude. That'd be too much. Dude, if they actually gave him his Fire Breath back, that would just be awesome, dude. Oh, man. Yeah, and, and, and the other thing, too, is that Zangief has that fear factor because if you get grabbed once, you can die. Right? So that that's what makes Zangief scary in Street Fighter V, is that if he grabs you once, you could potentially die, because Zangief is a Vortex character again. He, S, he fierce or EX SPDs you, and now you're in a guessing situation where you have to survive that, too. So it's really annoying. It's really, really annoying. And yeah, I mean, the flex is annoying. If you know how to deal with the flex, you can uh, deal with the flex. Like, you just have to, like, bait it out, and it doesn't have, like... If you have moves that can hit, I mean, Lucia's lucky because I can do crouch medium kick into the tap kick, which blows up the flex, you know, so I have that option at least. Uh, but you just have to find those kind of options for your characters. So four more months for this game, but we're going to find, we're going to get more information at Capcom Cup for sure. There's been no official announcement, but if they don't give us more information at Capcom Cup, you know the planet will riot. I'm sure Capcom is aware of this, so they're not not going to give us information. And the fact that Zangief and Kami have not been revealed yet, like, if they're going to reveal them at Capcom Cup, please... I hope Capcom reaches out to me and be like, we're going to let you announce and prepare people for the trailers because those are my two characters that I've been waiting for. They're my, like, picks and stuff, so... And they've been holding those characters out on me. <laughs> please! Give me the Zangief and Cammy information, please. <laughs> oh, man. I want my Zangief and I want my Cammy. Oh, man. Uh, Capcom Cup, yeah, February, February, mid-February, so, uh, Capcom Cup 2023, it's the middle of the week, so it starts on, uh, it's like six days, it's like seven days of, uh, of, of content, basically, so it's February 12th through 19th, February 12th through 19th, so February 12th and 13th are the LCQ, the Last Chance Qualifier, day one and day two, and then uh, February 14th, 15th, and 16th are going to be the group stage eliminations. And then, which is basically to get to the top 16, basically. Then February 17th and 18th are going to be the Street Fighter League Championships, the World Championships, Day 1 and Day 2. And then Capcom Cup, the top 16, the closer will be on February 19th. So, yeah, get ready for action. That's going to be, what is it? Um, that's going to be Sunday to Sunday. So, literally a week of Street Fighter Five action from Sunday to Sunday. Uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully they announce uh, Kami, Zangief, and Lily. Maybe they're saving all three of them for that, final, for that final day. So, let's hopefully we'll get that. We'll get all those characters in there and uh, see how it and finally get to see how they play and what they do. Because I feel like if they only did Kami and Zangief without a brand new character, that would feel kind of weird. So Capcom Cup seems to be a good place to reveal the last three characters. So hopefully that's what they'll do. And then, yeah, and then we only have, uh, we only have what, four and a half months afterwards to wait before, uh, before we get the game. So oof. secret brand new character we haven't seen yet. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Stop. Don't set us up for, for disappointments. But I do hope we get another beta. I hope we get an open beta. Because if we get an open beta, we can really test the servers, the matchmaking server side. I think that's really, really, really important to have the matchmaking side tests. Uh, to, to the, the matchmaking server to flood that server because everybody's going to jump into the open beta. So I, I want to see what happens in that situation, so. <sighs> I mean, a character not shown in the leaks, I mean, does that exist? I don't know, that sounds kind of uh, ambitious here, Donka. <laughs> 
Uh, but uh, in any case, I think that's it for me for today. Sorry about the late start. Like I said, don't want to don't want to bum everybody out too much or anything like that. But these this last week has been uh, boy, this last week has been rough, man. I have not. My energy levels have just been completely gone. Yeah, that emote right there, Converse, is actually exactly like how I'm feeling most of the time these days. I've just been like, that's why I haven't been able to stream that much because I've just been like asleep most of the days. Like I have no energy, like my executive function is gone. Like I just, I'm like, I need to do this. I need to take care of this. And then I just don't want to move and you know, and recently I think I got a little bit of food poisoning too. So that didn't help anything. So a lot of, it's just, it's been a, it's been a, uh, it's been a week. It's been a week. Let's just put it that way. So hopefully it'll get better. Hopefully things will feel better soon enough. So could just be winter mode. Some people are saying it could be a uh, long COVID fatigue. Some people were saying that I might have hypothyroidism. So I might have to take a look into that as well. But yeah, there's a lot of things. And then hopefully, you know, by the end of this month, I should be able to get uh, diagnosed for ADHD officially. And if I get officially diagnosed, then I can actually start getting some ADHD meds right now. So yeah, a lot of people feeling fatigued and depressed, huh? Yeah, I think it's just because, man... <laughs> We've been, we've been doing this for so long now, dude. We've been doing this for so long, and I think a lot of us are just tired. So, uh, oh, I mean, you just have to, so basically you have to find a psychologist to be able to diagnose you, and then you have to find the psychiatrist to be able to prescribe you the medication. So I'm going to go see the psychologist who can diagnose me, and then after I get the results from that, then I'm going to see if I can get the psychiatrist so that I can actually be prescribed the medication. So uh, it's it's uh, or the doctor can prescribe it, but it has to be two separate people is what I was told. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to try to play more games. Fortunately, these these guys have been doing a good job keeping me company and keeping me feeling good. So. They keep me happy for those of you on podcast listening. Definitely uh, cats have been helping. So, yeah. <gasps> Thank you, Nathan. <clears throat> Both of my cats are about 10 years old now. So Nathan is about 10 years old at this point. So, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, uh, not yeah, I'm... I'm not sure exactly how that works, but hopefully I'll be able to get the, uh, the the meds at some point in time. And we'll see if that improves a lot. See if that just makes it so that I'm more willing to, to play games and do more stuff and stuff. Yeah, he loves this mic. You know it, Renato. He always likes to rub his head on this mic. So, oh, there we go. There's the head rubs from Nathan. Thank you, kitty. Thank you, kitty. Anyways. You guys take care, all right? Stay safe out there. And, uh, you know, we're all going through it. We're all going through it, man. We're all struggling here. But that's one of the reasons why I talk about it is because, you know, just know that everybody is struggling. Even me, but like if you look up to me, then you know that I'm struggling too. So everybody's going through it. You're not alone. So. You know, take care out there and make sure that you are good to yourselves and make sure that you do take the time to do stuff for yourself and stuff. Struggle with bipolar and depression. Yeah, we all go through it, man. And it, that's why it's important to talk about it, normalize it. Like, I'm not embarrassed to say that I, I have depression and that, you know, I have ADHD and stuff like that. That's stuff we all go through it. We all need to figure out how to do it. And we all need to make sure that we get through it together together and be understanding of each other and be uh, willing to help each other through. And the more knowledge we have on it, the better we can help other people who struggle from it because obviously not everybody does. But for those of us who do, oftentimes one of the hardest things about it is that people tend to try to make you feel bad about it, right? It's a disorder. 
You know, why can't you just be happy? Blah, blah, blah. Just do this. It's so easy. I told myself I wanted to fix my sleep schedule and I fixed it. You can too. That's not how it works, man. It's not how it works. And that's what we all have to understand and uh, and learn and understand how to treat it better. So that's my spiel for today. Thank you guys for watching again. And uh, like I said, I might have some surprise. To, uh, it was Tuesdays during the course of this week just to analyze the last bit of footage and also so that we can uh, see the, uh, uh, you know, the JP and Blanca footage if that comes out. So uh, keep an eye out for that on my Twitter at twitter.com slash jchenzor. But thank you guys for listening and, um, uh, you know, glad you guys enjoying the content here because for you... This When this podcast graced your ears, it was the most important day of your life. But of course, for me... Whoops! It was Tuesday. I made the same mistake that I did last week. So let's try it again. <laughs> let's try it again. I keep clicking on the wrong one because I'm so used to clicking on end instead of the video feed here. So let's try this one more time again. Edit, edit, edit. For you, the God damn it. For you, the day that this podcast graced your ears was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. <laughs>